Hi everyone, welcome to the EGA program for April. This will be my first time doing a tutorial on embroidery while recording. I have a very interesting setup and I'm working backwards so we're going to see how this is going to turn out. So today we are going to learn how to make nuts and berries. What is basically going to happen is we're going to build off from the berry that we make. Now this is a very tiny berry, as you can see. These are very tiny wooden beads that I made these with. And because they were so small, I didn't really have to finish them off with a bead. Um, so, and also the one thing to remember is when you are working on with this very small bead, you want to make sure that you are working with a needle that is strong enough that it can be pushed through but thin enough so that you can wrap it around several times without any um, breakage or making sure that your needle doesn't get stuck. So sometimes you may have to use a set of pliers as well to pull the needle through to make sure everything is all squared away. So this, if you actually look at the acorn that I have, um, it is basically this bead right here elongated and then with a cap of a detached buttonhole. So the beads that I use are a variety of different sizes. So the elongated ones are going to be used for acorns um, and other types of beads because you can do a regular bead as well. The round, depending on your color, can be a blueberry, a holly berry, um, any other colors as you can see in here I even have some purple and white um, and they're decorated as little ornaments on the tree I'm just gonna put that off to the side so I decided to do a smaller bead to save time and to save time I have a pre threaded needle now with the one that I have that I've done I really took my time and only used three strands and I laid each piece so that way it would be nice and flat and have a nice sheen to finish it off you can put in like a little seed bead or a very fancy bead that you have in your stash but I left it the regular to save time and I didn't feel like searching around for my beads I also left a long enough tail to make sure that I can tie it securely to the canvas wherever I want it to have it, especially if you're going to do a three-dimensional work. You want to make sure you can tie it around a wire or however you would like to use it. So to start, the one thing you want to make sure is make sure your needle is as long as the bead. Um, you don't want to uh, have a very long bead and you're not a your needle not be long enough. So what you're going to do is bring, ooh, bring the thread through. Make sure you have enough thread left over. And this is if you're not going to attach um, a top to it. You basically want to make sure you have enough length that you can pull it through and secure it to whatever you would like to, whether it be canvas, linen, uh, Ada. Then what you're going to do is bring your thread to the top. Uh, pony beads work really well for this and you can build it up and they make the perfect blueberry. And then next you're going to lay each pass next to each other. And it's okay if it doesn't line up because you'll go over it again to fill in any gaps and you continue. And hopefully I have enough space for this whole video to record while I'm doing this. Now I am doing this very, very quickly um, to save time and I don't really feel like editing the video, which I could but I want to get it done. So I'm bringing this through. 
and you can see I'm trying to keep the stitches together what you can do is you can pinch them if you want to and bring them in I'm still holding this thread with my other fingers bringing it through covering up any holes um, you can use this with different threads as well and you will get a different texture if you were to use say silk versus um, pearl cotton versus um, metallic thread uh, you could do something completely different that you don't really see um, you could use this to make a garland if you wanted to for like the small trees that we did for um, the wool trees that we did for the retreat this would look fantastic if it had like metallic or even um, additional uh, three-dimensional berries like raspberries or you could even do um, different um, stump work with leaves. Uh, you can see my thread is getting a little twisted, but that's okay. We'll probably cover it up with a button cap. Um, I learned this technique inside the Inspirations magazine. Um, it actually showed how to do the acorn, the detached buttonhole cap, and also a uh, very interesting laced work leaf that has kind of like a detached buttonhole, um, but it provides a look to the leaf that is... Um, looks like it's uh, deteriorating so it's more of like a fall leaf look so again I'm continuing I am now starting with this being all full and because I didn't really lay down my threads I can feel a little bit of a resistance when I push the needle through to um, build it up because you can see the hole is getting tighter Um, I've also seen this, oh, seen this with, um, if you did uh, red berries in the beads, and I mean you would have to do a lot of them. Um, in the Inspiration Magazine, you can download the digital uh, guide pattern, and it is a wreath that is made with nothing but the beads wrapped and then the beads are finished with a bead through a very small wire and then you bring the wire up through and wrap that with embroidery floss and then you would put it together as a wreath. I thought that would be a little bit involved for us so I decided not to do that. So I can see I have a little hole right here. I'm going to come through. And I'm just going to cover that up. Now mind you, it's at the top, so it doesn't really matter. And to save time again, I am going to finish here for the wrap. Now mind you, if you're going to do this for a real project, again, you would want to use less floss make sure you're laying it down because that way you can see the difference between now my this isn't a different color you can see the difference in the sheen and the texture when you rotate it through you can see that there is a big difference between this one and this one but for this you can get the idea so to finish it off, I'm going to bring this back up through. Now this is where you would catch another little seed bead and finish it off so fancy. And bring this up through. And again, this is where pliers would be great. Eh. Because it's kind of stuck. Eh. 
We do have pliers. One moment. Got my pliers. So <laughs> now I'm going to take it and pull the needle through. Make sure you have your pliers handy. <laughs> and now when I pull that through, it's going to lock it in place. And usually with the berries, I will put a little knot at the top just to secure it in place. Now, if this was a regular berry, I would snip it off right here and then attach it to my canvas, which I have a sample canvas right here. So if this was a little berry, I would attach it to the canvas by threading the needle. So this is why you would make sure you have an extra long tail pull it through and then tie it off on the back side. But since this is going to be an acorn, I'm going to come in and just snip off the ends and remove the tails. I am using for this 3864 for the base and 3781 for the top. So now I'm going to see how quickly I can thread the top knee out. You could do this off camera so you don't see me mess up. Mm -hmm. um, depending on, the, again, the texture, if you were to use a pearl versus something else. You're going to have something that looks completely different. So the interesting way that you would start this is you would take your thread, make it into a loop, as you can see there. You would bring your loop around and pull your thread through. Make sure you grab your needle as well, which I did. And then you're going to pull it tight. I will show that again. So you take your thread. I may not have enough thread to do my buttonhole, but you will see as we go through this. So I have my loop. There's the loop. I put my bead, I bring this around, there's my loop, I grab inside the loop, see right in here, two little fingers, I grab that through, watching my needle, and I pull it through, just like that, and then you just tighten it up. And then you place it on your bead where you want your cap to start. See? So as I do this, there we are. Very good. So now, what you would do is you would do a detached buttonhole. Now, it says to bring this thread because you're going to work the way to tighten the loop. So you're going to bring them both around. And now what you're going to do is this is the thread, the floss that is not threaded to your needle. You're going to hold that. You're going to bring, I am probably not working in the correct direction but this works for me. And now I'm going to do a detach buttonhole and I'm gonna grab a couple of threads and this is why it's nice to have a, a lot of threads underneath here so that way you can grab some threads. And I'm working this around, pulling it tight. Let me see, okay. So and then what I did was I flip it up just to give it a little dimension so you can work 
either going down this way and then moving it up or you just turn it around and you work this way. So it's just a detached buttonhole and the direction is depending on how you want your edge to look. If you want a little flute, so this could be an interesting way on making a three-dimensional pine cone if you so choose to. And what you do is you continue to work around and bringing it in, making sure that the loop isn't moving up on your acorn or down. You can also, again, if you have more thread, you can move your thread around, bringing it up or down, moving it to make it lay a little better. Uh, continue around making sure you go over that thread as well pushing it down a little so it doesn't move on you bring it around and up and bring it around and it is just buttonhole if you enjoy wool applique you will enjoy making these because it is just buttonholes and blanket stitch blanket stitch it call, it's called a detached blanket stitch I'm sorry if I called it a detached buttonhole but it's it's kind of like the same because you have to kind of do the blanket stitch to make a buttonhole the old way continue around Making sure you can see what I'm doing. And hopefully next month we can meet in person for the next program. If not, you'll maybe have another video. You can see how nicely this is starting to shape up. I'll show you a closer so you can see under the light that it's starting to shape up really nice and the added benefit if you just want to have this this cap and no acorn attached to it you would do this same technique without the floss and then because you're not attaching this to anything, it will slip off and it will look like a little acorn cap. So we are finally all the way around. So we continue through. Oops, I forgot to grab my loop. So I go back. And grab my loop continuing through wow. okay so now oh I need one more you can keep count on how many you're doing if you so choose to um, what you're going to do next is you are going to come into this loop okay so you're going to go into the top of each loop into the blanket stitch. Let me come in closer. So let me fix my light. So in here, you can see there is my first loop. Again, I have that set accordingly. I bring this up. And then I make my other loop and then continue through bringing up my thread carrying it through and so forth 
um, when you get closer to the top, you may have to skip some of the loops to make it fit better. Skip, there it is. There. And you keep going around, grabbing that top loop and making sure that this is under the needle. Go over. There we are. Bring it through, pull the threads, and you can see that it's building up a nice texture because this thread fills in any of the gaps that you may have in your buttonhole. And you continue on. And you continue on. There we are. And this, all this stuff will be covered up when you get closer to the top. Um, take a look. My next buttonhole. Sure that's in place. Um, when this gets a little too short, you can always switch to this one and just bring this one underneath. I'm actually going to probably do one more and then I'm going to switch. There we are. Pull that out. I'm actually going to probably cut that a little shorter too. So now I'm going to thread the other one off camera. There. Okay. So now I am putting the shorter one around and picking up this one and continuing. Oh, so much fun. Uh, it works well if you have a magnifying glass, if you're going to do really small ones. You can even do this. It may be a little tricky, so you may have to put some glue down, um, flexible glue. You can actually gather some real acorns outside and put a cap on. Eh, come on. And um, have some fun with it. Um, and this is where you could maybe make some garland for even a real tree um, or even some really nice ornaments easily by gathering, you know, a few acorns, adding uh, caps to it, and then tying them together nice and easily. And you can see I'm skipping a couple, closing up. You can see I'm starting to close up at the top, bringing it together bringing it around there's probably some great tutorials online on how to do different techniques on making nuts and berries but I thought this was pretty nice and easy because it's just wrapping the stitches around the wrap around the wooden bead and then doing a stitch we are very familiar with, but in a different way. And again, I'm coming around the top, gathering some of the threads underneath, bringing that around. And you can uh, look up instructions on blanket stitch, detach blanket stitch or detach buttonhole. Oops. I didn't get my thread in front. So there we go. Pull that through. 
you can see it's tightening. Let me check my time. And so far, ooh, we're going to hopefully finish this in a half an hour. That would be great. And again, you shouldn't make this as hastily as I am. You should take your time. Enjoy making these. I do. Um, I usually have a lot of fun making these. I'll make a, a lot of them and then attach them like I did with that Christmas tree. That was a pattern that I got from Inspirations as well. Um, but I started learning this when I first joined um, the chapter when we did a GCC in stump work. And there were a lot of blueberries and raspberries. And it was a lot of fun to make something three-dimensional onto an embroidery piece just to give it some added textures. So now when we're closing up, we're seeing that, you know, we're running out of a little room. So I'm trying to do the best to close it up but still have um, some, still some stitch work to do. Bringing it around. I can see some of the other threads coming through, so I'll fix that with my needle. Close it up. Bring it through. And we are closed and set. So again, I will tie it off with a nice knot and I will leave the tails very long so you can see you can put two of them together or three of them together so on the piece where this is going to be a raspberry you can see how nicely that would actually look um, just having the two different shades or even if they were hung on an ornament or this was wrapped around wire. So that is how you would make a acorn through a wooded bead and taking that bead and making it into an ornament with berries. Same technique, different size bead and a different finishing for the top. I hope you enjoyed learning about nuts and berries. Thank you, and I'll see you for the next program. Bye.